I uh, want to read a metalogue from Gregory Bateson. Uh, this, this reading is part of the strand that I'm building uh, about creativity, um, strategizing, change, changing organizations, and uh, it's, um, what, what should I say, it is a project that I teetered on, never really started, um, when I was at Nottingham Business School. Uh, bits of what I'm going to put together uh, would, would appear in lectures, but um, the whole thing was never set down or, or, or set out, um, and I'm trying to do that at the moment. Anyway, one of the complex issues is that the ideas that this is based on are not um, readily understood or even readily accepted within the language community of management. I think that's the right phrase. Um, the language of management suffers from what Bateson calls epistemological error. And this is really quite fundamental to our efforts or understanding of trying to develop organisations and organisation performance. That's better. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. So this idea of epistemological error. And it's beautifully illustrated in the first metalogue of this book. Now you can see my copy is well fingered, well loved, written on in, in places. It's also um, published with a small print. It's not the easiest of things to read. Uh, I'm going to turn slightly to the side, I'm afraid to get good light on the page. But anyway, this is Why Do Things Get in a Muddle? And it is a dialogue between father and daughter. So here goes. Daughter, why do things get in a muddle? What do you mean, things? Muddle, says father. Daughter, well, people spend a lot of time tidying things, but they never seem to spend time muddling them. Things just seem to get in a muddle by themselves. And then people have to tidy them up again. Father, but do your things get in a muddle if you don't touch them? No, says daughter. No, not if nobody touches them. But if you touch them, or if anybody touches them, they get in a muddle. And it's a worse muddle if it isn't me. Father, yes, that's why I try to keep you from touching the things on my desk. Because my things get in a worse muddle if they're touched by somebody who isn't me. But do people always muddle other people's things? Why do they, Daddy? Father, uh, now, wait a minute. It's not so simple. First of all, what do you mean by a muddle? Daughter, I mean, um, so I can't find things, and so it looks all muddled up. The way it is when nothing is straight. Father, well, but are you sure you mean the same thing by muddle that anybody else would? Daughter, but Daddy, Daddy, I'm sure I do, because 
I am not a very tidy person. And if I say things are in a muddle, then I'm sure everyone else would agree with me. Father, all right. But do you think you mean the same thing by tidy that other people would? If your mummy makes your things tidy, do you know where to find them? Daughter. Hmm. Sometimes. Because, you see, I know where she puts things when she tidies up. Father. Yes, I try to keep her away from tidying my desk, too. I'm sure that she and I don't mean the same thing by tidy. Buddy, do you and I mean the same thing by tidy? <laughs> Father says, I doubt it, my dear. I doubt it. But Daddy, isn't it a funny thing that everybody means the same when they say muddled, but everybody means something different by tidy? But tidy is the opposite of muddled, isn't it? <laughs> now we begin to get to the more difficult questions, says Father. Let's start again from the beginning. You said, why do things always get in a muddle? Now we have made a step or two, and let's change the question to, why do things get in a state which Kathy calls not tidy? Do you see why I want to make that change? Yes, I think so, because if I have a special meaning for tidy, then some of other people's tidies would look like muddles to me. Even if we do agree about most of what we call muddles. Father, yes, that's right. Now, let's look at what you Call tidy. When your paint box is put in a tidy place, where is it? Daughter, here, on the end of this shelf. <coughs> Father, okay. Now, if it were anywhere else, oh no, that would not be tidy. What about at the under, <coughs> at the other end of the shelf? Here, like this. No, 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 that, that, that's not where it belongs. And anyhow, it would have to be straight, not all crooked the way you just put it. Oh, says Father, in the right place and straight. Yes, says daughter. Well, that means that there are only a few places which are tidy for your paint box. Only one place, Daddy. Father, no, very few places. Because if I move it a little bit, like this, it is still tidy. Oh, all right. But very, very few places. <coughs> all right. Very, very few places. Now, what about the teddy bear and your doll and the Wizard of Oz? and your sweater, and your shoes. It's the same for all these things, isn't it? That each thing has only a very, very, very few places which are tidy for that thing. Yes, Daddy, uh, but the Wizard of Oz could be anywhere on that shelf. And Daddy, Daddy, do you know what? <coughs> I hate it, I hate it, when my books get all mixed up with your books and Mummy's books. Yes, I know. 
Daddy, you didn't finish. Why do my things get the way I say isn't tidy? Oh, but I have finished. It's just because there are some more ways which you call untidy that there are ways which you call tidy. But that isn't a reason why. Oh, but yes it is, says Father. Yes it is. And it is the real reason, and only and very important reason. Daughter. Oh, Teddy, stop it! No, I'm not fooling. That is the reason. And all of science is hooked up with that reason. Let's make another example. If I put some sand in the bottom of this cup and put some sugar on top of it and now stir it with a teaspoon, <coughs> the sand and the sugar will get mixed up, won't they? Yes, but Daddy, is it fair to shift over to talking about mixed up when we started with muddled up? Father, hmm, I wonder, but I think so, yes. Because, let's say we can find somebody who thinks it's more tidy to have all the sand underneath all the sugar. And if you like, I'll say, I want it that way, daughter. Mm. All right. Take another example. Sometimes, in the movies, you'll see a lot of letters of the alphabet all scattered all over the screen. All Pickety pickety, and some even upside down. And then something shakes the table, and all the letters start to move. And then, as the shaking goes on, the letters all come together to spell the title of the film. Well, yes, I've seen that, Daddy. They spelt Donald. Oh, it doesn't matter what they spelt. The point is that you saw something being shaken and stirred up and instead of getting more mixed up than before the letters came together into an order all the right way up and spelt a word. They made up something which a lot of people would agree is sense. Yes Daddy, but you know, no, no I don't know. What I'm trying to say is that in the real world things never happen that way it's only in the movies but daddy i tell you it's only in the movies that you can shake things and they seem to take on more order and sense than they had before but daddy wait till i've finished this time <coughs> And they make it look like that in the movies by doing the whole thing backwards. They put the letters in order to spell Donald, and then they start the camera. And then they start shaking the table. Oh, Daddy, I knew that. And I did so want to tell you that. But then, when they run the film, they run it backwards. So that it looks as though things have happened forwards. But really, the shaking happened backwards, and they have to photograph it upside down. Why do they, Daddy? Oh, God. Why do they have to fix the camera upside down, Daddy? No, I won't answer that question now, because we're in the middle of the question about muddles. Oh, all right, Daddy, but don't forget, Daddy. You've got to answer that question about the camera another day. Don't forget. You won't forget, will you, Daddy? Because I may not remember. Please, Daddy. <coughs> I'm going to stop there. You're beginning to get the idea, aren't you? No, I hope so. No, I hope so. The words and the state of affairs in the world are different. The meaning of the words, tidy, untidy, is something which is here, 
and not actually out there in the world. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. This is a very small example of what Bateson has come to call epistemological error. The state of tidy is a state of mind, not a state of nature. If we think nature is tidy, then we have made an epistemological error. Okay.